Kirchhoff's voltage law is a, uh, another way to deal with electrical systems. And unlike the current law where we're summing the currents into any junction to be equal to zero, in Kirchhoff's voltage law, uh, the idea is to work with loops, and the voltage drop around any loop has to equal zero. So that's the governing principle. This is an example of a system where Kirchhoff's current law can be kind of slow. That's because we might have to define several voltages, say V1 and V2, uh, that are just going to be eliminated later on. Uh, so we have V1, V2, and VO. Uh, so we'll end up with three uh, Kirchhoff's current law equations. Uh, they might look something like this, and then we have to combine them. This can all be done, but uh, it might take a few minutes. Here's where Kirchhoff's voltage law can be useful. Uh, the idea, again, is that we uh, work in terms of loops. Here, th all the elements are all arranged in one loop, so the procedure is to define a loop current for each of those loops, sum the voltage drops along each loop to equal zero, apply the element laws, and then use the loop currents that we found to find uh, any outputs of interest. And again, we're defining quantities, uh, in this case, uh, loop currents, to help us solve for other quantities, so those are ultimately going to be eliminated. So let's uh, do actually do this as an example. The first step is to define a loop current for each loop. And in this case, there's only one loop in our system, so we'll call it I. That's the current going through each element of our system. Second, let's sum the voltage drops uh, along each loop to zero. And I'm going to start in the lower left-hand corner and uh, sum the voltage drops across each element. So we have zero minus E, that's the voltage drop from uh, ground to the top of the um, voltage source. And then we have E minus V1, V1 minus V2, V2 minus VO, and VO minus zero. All of this has to be equal to zero. Now this is admittedly kind of a trivial equation because uh, every time we've added a quantity, we've already subtracted it. So of course everything cancels out and equals zero. But what's interesting is when we start to apply the element laws, we want to apply the element law for the uh, drop across the resistor. That's just going to be R1 times I. Uh, for the capacitor, it's one over C1S times I. Uh, for the resistors, uh, we have R2 times I and another R2 times I all equal to zero. So let's just collect all of the terms here. In terms of the I's, we have one over C1S plus, let me see, an R1 plus two R2's. All that multiplies by I to give us E. The final thing we need to do is we need to use the loop currents to find the output of interest, which in this case is VO. Well, V1, VO is just equal to I times R2. So once we found I, we actually have an equation for, um, for uh, VO. So I can just multiply both sides of this equation by uh, R2. And that's uh, going to give me uh, an equation for VO. So then we have 1 over C1S plus R1 plus 2R2 multiplied by VO is equal to R2 times E. Now I have a 1 over C1S, so I'm going to have to multiply uh, both sides of my, of my equation by that. So we get R1 plus 2R2 times C1 times S plus 1. All of this multiplies by VO, and that's going to be equal to R2 C1 S times E. If we rewrite this as a differential equation, we end up with R1 plus 2 R2 times C times VO dot plus 1 times VO is equal to R2 C2 times E dot. And notice there's a time derivative of the input function E here. And that does happen, and that's a completely legal thing. So we have a differential equation in input-output form. VO is the output, and E is the input.